Here's a quick list of the 10 best weapons you can use in the Elden Ring DLC. You guys know I don't like BS in my videos and I get straight to the point, but just let me explain how I rank these before I get too deep in this video. In Souls games, some weapons are situational and depending on the boss or the enemy you're fighting, some can just be better than others. For example, the Dragon Hunter's Great Katana is one of your best choices in dragon fights, but since that's the best for dragon fights, that doesn't make it the all-around best weapon in the game. So for these rankings, remember, it's kind of loose and some of these can move around depending on the situation. Also, these weapons weapons don't include crazy buffing since that's not my preferred way to play and this is post patch so i'm not even gonna bother adding the perfumer bottles in here these are all just strong and straightforward weapons so hopefully this helps you pick one with all that said i'm gonna get to the ranking right now but first i quickly ask for a like and a sub on this video and if you do thank you so much but let's get started with number 10 the lizard great sword now you might not even have this or know about this one and that's because this is the first of the drop rate weapons i'm going to show you today and i'll show you where to farm for this in a second but first the reason this weapon found its spot on here is because it's heavy and charge heavy shoot a bolt out of the sword this is like running a crossbow but with infinite arrows and to make it even better the bolt you can shoot can either shoot poison or bleed in these clips i'm using a bleed build on the sword and that means it's causing the bolt that shoots out of the weapon to actually do bleed damage now this will stack and proc hemorrhage in about three hits and this costs no fp to use and doesn't put you at any risk of getting hit you can literally just spam this as long as you stay alive so i definitely recommend this weapon and if you want this for yourself the best spot to farm for this is the fog rift catacombs just kill the first npc and then reset until you get it but next at number nine on this list i have the flax swords these are kind of a toss-up for me i'm not sure if i like the latter better but since i prefer speed for survivability i guess i had to put these at number nine the flax stack bleed and have a b in dexterity which is all right but definitely nothing crazy but the best and main thing you're going for with this weapon is its ash of war if you're able to get the full combo out on an enemy with low poise you can get blood loss to trigger twice and also this kind of bullies the enemy around while you're doing it which feels great but that's really going to be the main reason you're using the flax is just how good this ash war can be if you get the whole thing off so if you want this for yourself you need to progress all the way to the first rise grace and from here just progress through this entire area until you find the four npc boss fight after you've beaten the boss you can grab these swords and you can try them out to see if you like them at number eight on this list i have mesmer's soldier spear and yeah it's his soldier spear not actually the boss weapon now this weapon was actually recommended to me by one of my subs and honestly i was surprised at how good this was you're only really using this for its charged heavy which can attack twice and can either stagger a boss if you're using it in a heavy build or if you're using a blood occult you can actually trigger blood with this which is pretty nice but if you're going for pure damage with this it's probably best to use heavy and just stagger the boss there's not really too much more to say about this it's really just a normal great spear all around but it's charged heavy and a charged build can seriously rack up some crazy damage the easiest place i found to farm this is the castle anesis checkpoint and from here just backtrack to the soldier that walks down the stairs and you can kill this one for the great spear at number seven i have the star line sword this katana is a great fit for any intelligence build if you're using the moon veil now i definitely recommend you swap this in and see how you like it since the main feature on this is its ash of war and honestly this ash of war is probably the coolest in the entire game it's a three phase attack ash of war with a bunch of damage phases and on top of that you can even stack blood loss with this though it's really not that high at least in boss fights you will be triggering it this ash of war will have you flipping around stabbing enemies in the back I, it's crazy and fun to use this is definitely one of my personal favorite weapons in this dlc and if you want this for yourself to get this come to the cerulean coast and hug the right wall when you get here all the way until you find this cave once in here take the path to the left and down on the beach you can kill the boss and this will drop you this katana i'm probably going to be showing the route on the map since it's actually really easy to follow if you just look at the map but if you have a problem finding it just let me know in the comments at number six i have the great sword of solitude you can literally get this right at the start of the dlc like this was the first thing i got in the dlc and my only problem was was i didn't use it enough it's ash war has a lot of damage on it and can be followed up for another strong hit and its second hit will usually knock enemies down which you can combo into a heavy attack this sword has an a in strength and hits like an absolute truck it feels amazing to use when clearing out a lot of enemies since you're just gonna be one tapping a lot of them and like i said you get this right at the start of the dlc so from the first grace just head down to here but once you get here you are gonna have to kill the psycho that stays down here and good luck because this dude is a freak if you fought him like me at the start of the dlc it was definitely a nice welcome at number five i have the black steel great hammer when you use the ash war sacred blade in a holy build with this weapon it feels very good and has high poise damage this means you can stagger bosses and enemies fairly easy this has a very nice heavy move set for anyone using a strength build i definitely recommend you try this just like the last weapon you get this right at the start of the dlc so from the first grace come to the right down here and kill the black knight that's in here and after killing this enemy you'll obviously get this weapon at number four i have the spear of the impaler and now it's time for mesmer's real spear and obviously you get this from 
turning in his remembrance this does split physical and fire damage and charging its heavy attack lets you throw the spear which also blows up into fire on impact it'll even leave fire on the ground and this does a lot more damage than you expect especially when you use a build surrounding fire and throwing damage just by using these two talismans alone just throwing this does some crazy damage and on top of that you have an insane ash of war with mesmer's assault you get another three phase ash of war that has so many layers of damage onto it not only is this ash of war very very strong but it's also fun to use i definitely recommend using this weapon it's one of my personal favorites there's so much going for this weapon at number three i have another drop rate weapon on this list and this is the fire knight's great sword this is the best choice for a fire weapon in the dlc and does some ridiculous damage using the ash war flame spear is going to be your go-to with this and i recommend you choose a fire ash war when making your choice with this weapon since fire ash wars imbue the weapon with fire i do know a lot of people also go for this weapon for its move set i'm personally not that much of a fan of it but i know that is one main reason a lot of people are liking this this weapon is pretty heavily used right now so it's definitely worth checking out and seeing if you like it in my opinion i think i might use the impaler that i had at number four over this but i have seen a lot of people using this so you should try it out and see how you like it the only problem is is the farm for it is pretty hard since i think the drop rate for this is really low no one's sure what the drop rate actually is for this to farm this but if you do want to farm it i'll show you the spot right now come to the main gate plaza grace and on your right go up the stairs and all the way straight forward and you can find the fire knight and honestly this weapon took me a minute to farm for so good luck like i said no one's sure what the drop rate is on it but i definitely bet it's low at number two i have the meteoric or great sword i know i've glazed this weapon a lot but it's definitely deserving of its spot for people who just run through the game no buffs just like me and play straight up this weapon does an insane amount of damage your ash of war will send you forward which is great for closing the distance and then using it again will explode into lightning this will not only close your gap but also get a crazy amount of damage out and personally i think its move sets are amazing and i really like this weapon all around to get this come to the ruined forge of starfall past and complete the forge to find this weapon if you're stuck on this i do have a guide already up on my channel that goes more in depth on how to find this but the dungeon isn't complete until you grab this weapon so you can definitely find it if you want to explore on your own and finally at number one i have the blood fiend's arm if you've never seen this weapon you're definitely going to be surprised why this is number one and the reason this weapon got its spot here is because of the way it bullies everything it hits this weapon stacks high physical damage and you can also get up to 200 blood loss stack on it when you use this you're mainly using it in a charged melee build that's because the blood fiend's arm will stagger bosses and enemies in two hits leading you to sometimes be able to get a boss in a sequence like you see on screen where this boss can't even move or fight back this boss is just constantly getting staggered and knocked down and on top of that i'm also triggering blood loss and that's because it's charged heavy actually has a blood aoe on it adding more damage and on top of that when you add a blood occult to this weapon on your second hit you're probably going to trigger blood loss if not your second your third every time if i'm stuck on a boss i literally just pull this weapon out and it kills it no problem because being able to stagger in two hits and cause blood loss is ridiculously overpowered and has to be the number one weapon right now you can get this in prospect town by killing the blood fiend in this final area and again if you need a deep guide on this i have a whole video showing you how to get this and in that video i also show you my very good and simple build and the whole build is built around this weapon so definitely check that out if you're looking for a build with this but anyways guys that's gonna wrap this up thank you guys so much for watching all the way through if you stayed all the way until this point comment the number one and after that comment your favorite weapon that you found in this dlc so far i'm actually very interested to see what you guys are gonna put down there because i haven't really looked at the majority of people's opinions on what they think yet so definitely let me know but that's gonna do it for this video if you could leave me a like and a sub on your way out i would really appreciate it but anyways guys my name is prez and i'm out bro peace there's no way you're still here and what did you not like the video either well you better like the video because if you don't i'm gonna flick like this on your mom's tit God. There's just no way. <laughs> <laughs> that clip, right?